Greetings comrades, it's me, and let's get straight into reviewing the new IMEX 21mm f1.4 camera lens to smithereens. This is a brand new manual focus lens for full frame digital SLR cameras, and it comes in Canon EF, Nikon F and Pentax K mounts. It can also be easily adapted onto mirrorless cameras, with the right adapter of course. IVIX originally brought it out as a cine lens, but this slightly newer version has a lighter body intended for stills photographers. The lens costs $900 US dollars or £675 here in the UK for an ultra wide angle full frame f1.4 optic. That's quite a reasonable price actually, so I'm keen to see what it's capable of. I'd like to thank IMEX for loaning me a copy of this lens for a couple of weeks for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. This rather chunky little monster carries the mild distinction of being the first 21mm lens that I've ever tested in about, well, 11 years of doing this, and on a full frame camera, that gives you a field of view on the edge of being ultra wide angle. I love lenses that are this wide, but its key selling point is, of course, that super bright maximum aperture of f1.4. This lens lets in tons of light to help with shooting indoors or in darker situations, and can even get you some nicely out of focus backgrounds, well, if you move close enough to your subject, that is. It could be useful for tons of photographic work, from landscape and architecture photography, street photography, and particularly astrophotography. Let's look at its build quality first. As you can see, the lens is rather big, and at 830 grams or nearly 2 pounds, it definitely feels on the heavy side. It's mostly made of plastic, although the rear mount, unsurprisingly, is made of metal, and is also nicely weather sealed. Although it's a manual focus lens, there are electronic contacts here for controlling the aperture and for EXIF data to be communicated. Unfortunately though, on my Canon camera anyway, in-camera corrections were not possible. The main control point for this lens is its rubberized manual focus ring. I recently criticised the IREX 30mm f1.4 lens for having a focus ring that was much too stiff. They must have listened, because this focus ring turns nice and smoothly and quite easily, and for such a wide angle lens it has a long focus throw, making it very precise to use. There's a further control ring above the focus ring, this lets you tighten the focus ring in place to avoid it being turned accidentally which can sometimes be helpful when you only need to shoot at infinity for a while. A telltale sign that this was originally designed as a cine lens is that it exhibits only a small amount of breathing as you change focus, as you can see here. To be honest, the only thing I didn't really like about the lens's design is the plastic front lens cap. It looks good, but only has a flimsy grip, easily falling off the lens when it's bumped around in your camera bag, which fueled my anxiety about that bulbous front glass element. And yes, another setback is that you cannot put front mounted filters onto this lens, that's a little bit of a shame for landscape photographers. The lens does come with a nice and somewhat rigid fabric case to keep it safe in transport, and also a plastic hood that's surprisingly deep for an ultra wide angle optic. Overall, the lens is fairly chunky and heavy, but it works perfectly fine and feels solid enough, well, apart from the precarious lens cap. Alright then, image quality. I'm testing it out here adapted onto my mirrorless Canon EOS R5 camera with its full frame 45 megapixel sensor. No in camera corrections were available with this lens. At f1.4, we can immediately see that the lens is capturing loads of detail in the middle of the image here. However, contrast is a bit low, revealing itself as mild ghosting on contrasting edges with just a hint of purple fringing. Over in the corners, we are seeing a slightly softer image with lower contrast again, but the amount of detail being captured here is still reasonably good, especially considering you're working on a 45 megapixel camera. Stop down to f2 for a lot more brightness and contrast in those corners, and back in the middle, the high resolution is now joined by excellent contrast to give you a very punchy image. Stop down to f2.8 for razor sharpness in the middle of the picture, and the corners look considerably sharper than before now too. Stop down to f4 or f5.6 for minuscule little improvements in sharpness in those corners, and the lens stays this sharp down to f11. Stop down to f16, and softness does begin to emerge due to the effect of diffraction. 
overall. This isn't quite the sharpest lens in the 20mm range that I've ever tested, but it certainly is pretty good. It's more than usable at f1.4, capturing good detail, although stopping down to f2.8 will help it to give pleasure to a higher resolution camera, while also making a difference to your contrast. Ok, distortion and vignetting. The good news is that distortion is relatively under control, with a low level of barrel distortion that won't often make itself felt in real life situations. Less encouraging are the extremely dark corners at f1.4, although with a bright aperture, wide angle lens, that is just par for the course. Stop down to f2 and the corners look far brighter, and at f2.8 and f4, vignetting is basically gone. The lens can focus down to 30cm, giving you a little flexibility when shooting smaller subjects. At f1.4, again, we see good resolution, but somewhat low contrast, and the purple fringing seems a little stronger here too. Stop down to f2 though, and sharpness and contrast become perfect again. Ok, let's see how well the lens handles bright light, an important question on an ultra-wide angle optic that'll be catching the sun in the frame from time to time. A row of flaring artefacts is visible here, although they are quite soft and fairly translucent, this is a performance on the good side of average. And while we're working in the dark, let's see about coma levels, because a lot of people will be wondering how suitable this lens is for astrophotography. Unfortunately, we are seeing some quite clear coma smearing at f1.4, although I've certainly seen worse than this also. At f2 it's reduced, and at f2.8 it's gone. While we're here, let's zoom out and look for sun stars. Stop down to f5.6 to see them begin to emerge. At f11 and f16, they become quite impressive. When shooting at f1.4, even a very wide angle lens can get you out of focus backgrounds, so let's look at the quality of its bokeh. Deeply out of focus backgrounds look lovely and soft here. However, the middle distance and more complex backgrounds do tend to get a little edgy. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. Well, at f1.4 it's certainly there, things are looking pretty purple overall. However, stop down to f2 or f2.8 for that longitudinal fringing to go away. Overall, well, although the lens's image quality shies away from being excellent, it is consistently good in pretty much every area. It has no serious optical weaknesses, to be honest, although I was hoping to see a little less coma smearing when shooting in the dark. Considering the lens's reasonable price, and the extra challenge Irix faced by choosing to design it for digital SLR cameras, which don't generally cope as well with wide-angle lenses as mirrorless cameras do, the lens is a reasonably good deal. Its most direct competition is the much older Sigma 20mm f1.4 art lens, which is also for digital SLR cameras. It's hard to draw an exact comparison from my test images, which were on the lower resolution Canon 6D camera for the Sigma lens, but from what I can tell, the Irix lens looks a bit sharper to me. The Irix lens is also less expensive, but the older Sigma lens does at least have autofocus, so if you're a digital SLR shooter and you don't mind manually focusing, then the Irix lens is one that's quite recommendable, really. Have you ever thought to yourself, boy, Chris just doesn't make enough content for me? If so, then check out my Patreon page in the description below. I put all kinds of exclusive videos and other content down there for supporters of this channel. And thank you to those who have already signed up. You are making a big difference to me keeping things going in my lens testing man cave. Ciao for now.